very good evening and welcome to the news tonight here on Rajya Sabha TV. In the next 30 minutes, I'll be getting you all the day's top stories from India and across the world. Let's start with the headlines. Pakistan continues its flip-flop. A week after Envoy Abdul Basit said that the comprehensive bilateral dialogue process was suspended, the Foreign Office now says the door for talks with India still open. India slams the use of the hidden veto that China used to block the bid to ban Pathankot mastermind and Jaish-e Mohammed chief Masood Azhar at the UN. Questions why general members are not informed of the reason for not imposing sanctions on terrorists. Campaigning for the second phase of assembly polls ends in West Bengal. Voting will be held in six North Bengal districts on Sunday. Delhi kickstarts its second phase of the odd-even scheme to combat air pollution. Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal appeals to people to make the initiative a success. And Rajya Sabha Chairman Mohammad Hamid Ansari gives CBI the approval to prosecute Anil Sahani. The MP in the upper house faces charges of cheating and corruption in the LTC scam. start with that apparent U-turn that Pakistan is now saying it's expressing, expressing willingness, in fact, to resume talks with India. But the central government has indicated that dialogue will resume only after Pakistan takes concrete action on those behind the Pathan Court air base attacks. Meanwhile, India has also objected to the use of the secret veto to protect terrorists from UN sanctions, an action that China has repeatedly taken most recently to shield the Pathan Court attackers. More flip-flops from Pakistan over the dialogue process with India. Pakistan's foreign office now says the door for talks still is open. The comments come a week after Pakistan High Commissioner Abdul Basit said the comprehensive bilateral dialogue process was suspended. Pakistani Foreign Office spokesperson Nafis Zakaria said, and I quote him, we need to look ahead and not think in terms of foreclosing any options. Both sides are in contact with each other. Once the modalities are worked out, secretary-level talks would take place. It is Pakistan which has uh, created confusion. The Pakistan ambassador in India uh, making such a statement a few days back created confusion. Actually, India and Pakistan should engage themselves in a meaningful dialogue and try to sort out all the problems bilaterally. Pakistan is not aware of it. After the fact of the Pathan Court, he has killed the Pathan Court. He has killed the Pathan Court. Last December, the two nations agreed to restart the peace dialogue, calling it the Comprehensive Bilateral Dialogue. However, foreign secretary-level talks between the two countries were derailed after the terror attack on the Pathan Court Air Force Base, in which seven security personnel were killed. Pakistan-based Jaish-e Mohammed claimed responsibility for the attack, in which six attackers were also killed. India sent evidence to Pakistan and also hosted its joint investigation team in Pathan Court. The joint investigation team loud and clear while in India makes a statement that there is clinching evidence being provided by India which convinces them beyond an out of doubt of the involvement of Pakistan. The Pakistan media said that there has been no cooperation and that the entire thing was stage managed, etc., etc., based on which the Pakistan High Commissioner India Basit on his own volition without Perhaps the clearance from the establishment of Pakistan, but maybe on the direction of the Pakistan army, stated that talks have been suspended. Made him look ridiculous and foolish. Meanwhile, India slammed the use of hidden veto that allowed China to block its bid at the United Nations to ban Pathan Court mastermind JEM chief Masood Azhar. Demanding accountability, India said the world body's general members were never informed the reason for not acceding to requests for sanctioning terrorists. During a debate at the UNSC on Thursday, India's permanent representative to the UN ambassador, Syed Akbaruddin, said, and I quote him, the procedure of unanimity and anonymity of the Al-Qaeda, Taliban and ISIS sanctions committees need to be revisited. The procedures of unanimity and anonymity lack in a result of accountability. Quote unquote. 
After the Pathan Court attack, India wrote to the United Nations to list JM chief under the UN Sanctions Committee. China used its veto to request the UN Committee to keep it on hold. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Meanwhile, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley today addressed a G20 Finance Ministers and Central Bank Governors meeting today, stating that the time is ripe for a re-evaluation of the fiscal policy space. Jaitley said that the key downside risks that could derail the fragile global recovery are weak demand and tighter financial markets. Noting that both imports and exports had declined in all G20 economies in 2015, Jaitley stressed the need to articulate an effective policy response to revive the global economy. Yesterday, Jaitley had convened, uh, had in fact conveyed to the US India's concern over the hike in the H1B and L1 visa fees. India and the US also agreed to enhance collaboration on tackling offshore tax evasion in sharing cross border tax information. He also called for concrete action against countries that sponsor terrorists by invoking the Financial Action Task Force that combats money laundering. And in a significant move, Rajya Sabha Chairman Hamid Ansari has given his approval to the CBI to prosecute JDU MP Anil Sahani. The MP is facing charges of cheating and corruption in the LTC scam, but has so far denied all charges and refused to resign. Here's a report. Rajya Sabha Chairman Mohammad Hamid Ansari gave his approval to the CBI to prosecute JDU MP Anil Sahani. The Rajya Sabha MP faces charges of cheating and corruption in what is being called the LTC scam. The Bihar MP will be the first from the upper house to be prosecuted by CBI. This खबर हमारे संज्ञान में है पार्टी के राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष श्री नीतीश कुमार जी एवं वरिष्ठ नेता श्री सरद यादव जी को मैंने सभी तथ्यों से अवगत कराया है और हम श्री साने जी के भी संपर्क में हैं उचित समय पर आपको सही सूचनाओं से अवगत कराएंगे द सीबीआई हैज चार्ज दैट सहानी कंस्पायर्ड विद अदर पर्संस टू यूज फॉर्ज्ड ई टिकट्स एंड फेक बोर्डिंग पासेस विदाउट परफॉर्मिंग द एक्चुअल जर्नी हिज एक्शंस अलीजेडली डिफ्रॉडेड राज्यसभा टू द ट्यून ऑफ 23.71 लाख रुपए दिस केस वाज सरफेस इन 2013 एंड एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम आवर पार्टी स्टैंड वाज वेरी क्लियर दैट इफ देयर इज समथिंग एविडेंस द केस शुड बी फाइल्ड एंड रीड and the, the trial should take place and anybody guilty should not be spared CBI filed a case on 31st of October 2013 against Sahani and others after the Central Vigilance Commission reported the case Sahani however has denied the charges and refused to resign the membership of the house ye sab rajniti se prerit hai jo rajniti se dresh rakhne wale log hain usko sabke samne CBI ko uska jaanch karna chahiye ya fir kis karan se inke khata mein ek paisa bhi nahi gaya hai aur kis karan se mere paas mein hi bheja gaya तो कहीं ना कहीं सीबीआई को भी दिग्भ्रमित दिग्भ्रमित करने का काम किया गया है कानून अपना काम करेगा और लेकिन इससे निश्चित रूप से कि जेडीयू जैसे जो दल है हालांकि नीतीश कुमार जी से कोई आप नैतिकता की अपेक्षा कर नहीं सकते क्योंकि वो स्वयं एक चारा घोटाले के जो आरोपी हैं उनके साथ गठबंधन बनाकर साबुद्दीन जैसे अपराधियों के साथ मिलकर आज वो बिहार के सत्ता में है Sahani claimed that twice he drew attention of the authorities in 2013 about false bills submitted in his name by racketers against LTC. The second term Rajya Sabha member called it a conspiracy against him claiming that he was a whistleblower and was unfairly targeted. All MPs get 34 air tickets in a year for themselves, their family members and associates for domestic travel to their constituencies. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV. Now the uncertainty over the conduct of the Thrissur Puram festival in Kerala ended today after the state government cleared holding fireworks display and parading of elephant, elephants in the traditional style Chief Minister Uman Chandi gave the clearances at a meeting of the office bearers of the relevant temple boards Chandi said that all steps will be taken to ensure safety during fireworks display and parading of elephants The uncertainties over Puram were triggered after the high court order banned the fireworks display during the night hours in the wake of the recent kollam fireworks tragedy the only decision is um, thrissur puram must be uh, uh, must be conducted in a very good way but at the same time we have to follow the guidelines of the uh, secure uh, safety measures and also we will consider the directions from the court 
and there are some rules that also under law that also we have to implement. And now over to the national capital where the second phase of the odd even formula kick started today to combat spiraling air pollution. Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal also appealed to the people to join hands to make the initiative a success. Here's a report. Car traffic on Friday registered a huge drop in Delhi as the city once again rolled out its odd-even traffic formula. The fortnight-long scheme aims at battling pollution in the national capital but is creating trouble for other states. जानकारी आज सुबह मिली हमें टीवी में हम जहां होटल में रुके वहां पर टीवी पे आज आ रहा था कोई 15 अप्रैल है तो आज कोई छुट्टी का भी दिन है ना हां लेकिन हमें तो यार जाना है कहां जाएंगे? मतलब मतलब पूरे दिल्ली में कहीं नहीं निकल सकते कैसा है क्या होता है हमें कुछ थोड़ा पता है यार इन इनकन्वीनियंस बट वी कैन ऑलवेज यूज द पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्ट टू अ लार्ज एक्सटेंड मेट्रो इज फाइन सो मेट्रो कवर्स मोस्ट ऑफ द रिक्वायरमेंट इवन इफ इट इज नॉट अ लास्ट माइल कनेक्टिविटी कुड बी अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ अ प्रॉब्लम बट स्टिल आई वेलकम दैट द आम आदमी पार्टी गवर्नमेंट हैज डिप्लॉयड 2000 ट्रैफिक पर्सनल 580 एनफोर्समेंट ऑफिशियल्स एंड ओवर 5000 सिविल डिफेंस वॉलंटियर्स ऑन द रोड्स फॉर 15 डेज Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal also appealed to Delhiites to join hands to make the scheme a success. इस बार मुख्य तौर पर जो चैलेंज है वो ये है कि मौसम बदल चुका है गर्मी का मौसम है लोगों को चौराहों पर सिविल डिफेंस को ड्यूटी करने का चैलेंज है स्कूल सारे खुले हुए हैं बच्चों का चैलेंज है बट हमें भरोसा है दिल्ली वालों पर सब मिलकर के एक दूसरे का सहयोग करेंगे कारपुल करेंगे और इसका समाधान निकाल People violating the rule will be fined 2000 rupees. Also a 20 member special task force will look into matters reported by mobile teams experts will monitor its effect on gaseous pollutants like ozone this time friday being a public holiday did not see much rush on public transport facilities like the delhi metro and dtc buses but the real test will be on monday when office goers and school children step out the scheme applies from 8 am to 8 pm and will not be implemented on sundays with inputs from anu divan bureau report rajya sabha tv in other news, President Pranam Mukherjee today addressed the convocation of the 71st staff course at the Defence Services Staff College in Tamil Nadu's Wellington today. Mukherjee stressed on the coordinated action by the three wings of the armed forces to ensure ultimate victory in conflicts. He said such a synergy ensured victory in the 1971 war for India that liberated Bangladesh. The two-day visit will also see the President in Madhya Pradesh where he will inaugurate the fourth retreat of the judges of the Supreme Court at the National Judicial Academy in Bhopal. He will also take part in a dinner hosted by the National Judicial Academy. Chief Justice of India T.S. Thakur and other judges of the Supreme Court will attend the retreat. With that, let's take you through what more made news across the country today in Nationwide. A man was killed and three others injured in firing by security forces in Kupwara district to disperse protesters at an army camp. Police fired tear gas canisters at protesters who started pelting stones. One of them hit a protester in the head, resulting in his death. The death toll has now risen to five in the unrest that began on Tuesday following allegations of molestation of a girl in Hantwara. Family members of the jailed Indian Kirpal Singh, who had died in Pakistan, met Home Minister Rajnath Singh today. Kirpal Singh's sister was accompanied by Dalbir Kaur, sister of another Indian, Sarabjit Singh, who had also died in Pakistani jail in 2013. The family members denied Pakistan's claim that he died of a heart attack and demanded a post-mortem to ascertain the facts. The Delhi government today banned the manufacture, storage, distribution and sale of pan masala, gutka and all forms of tubal tobacco for one year. Unpackaged products of Tubal Tobacco too are within the ambit of the ban. Previously, the Delhi government issued a notification in September 2012 for a ban on Gutka in the city. The Union Home Ministry's decision to restart construction work of a lift irrigation canal along the line of actual control in Ladakh was stopped by the Indian Army after the Chinese Army objected to the project. The decision was taken after locals protested for about 20 days. China does not view the line of actual control in Ladakh sector as clearly demarcated. And now let's get you all the election related news in our segment Verdict 2016. Well, campaigning for the second phase of the assembly polls in West Bengal came to an end today and uh, voting will be held in six North Bengal districts including Jalpaiguri, Darjeeling and Malda in this phase. 
The second phase of the polling for 56 assembly constituencies will take place on the 17th of April. The first phase of the six-phase elections in the state was held in two parts on the 4th and the 11th of April. And elaborate security arrangements were made today for the second phase of the assembly elections in Bengal. The central armed uh, police forces will handle the situation inside the booths, while the state police forces are involved in other jobs like managing queues and crowds. In all, 83 companies of central security forces, 2,800 state police have been put in place to ensure peaceful polling. Also, 383 candidates are fighting for 56 constituencies going to polls in the second phase, which will, of course, take place on the 17th of April. Area domination कर रहे हैं जो route chart है उसके हिसाब से पूरे इलाके में जो forces हैं वो visit कर रही हैं polling booths और उसके surrounding villages में लोगों में confidence पैदा कर रहे हैं कि हम हैं और हम ensure करेंगे free और fair and peaceful polling. All booths, single, double, triple, quadruple, शवाई booth हैं मधे CAPF रहे चे Without a quick break here, we'll be back with international news in a bit. Stay with us. We should have teaching of earth sciences in school. Our aim should be that the youngsters should not only think about physics, chemistry, maths, biology, but also geology. I can survive without wearing a gold, but I cannot uh, survive if I don't take water even for one day. Watch Eureka only on Rajya Sabha TV. Welcome back. Let's get you some international news now, starting with the US. We're ahead of Tuesday's New York primary. Democratic presidential hopefuls Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders exchanged heated debates at CNN's primetime event. Both candidates traded barbs on their qualifications for the presidency. The debate also featured major issues including Wall Street reforms and gun control laws. If you believe that given the crises we face as a nation, a declining middle class, 47 million people living in poverty, a broken criminal justice system, if you believe that those issues can be, can be addressed by establishment politics and establishment economics, you've got a very good candidate to vote for, but it's not Bernie Sanders. Ahead of the crucial New York primary on Tuesday, heated exchanges were witnessed between Democratic presidential hopefuls Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. Sanders cast doubt on Clinton's judgment and credibility, while Clinton hit back at the woman senator saying he lacked experience and pragmatism. That's why I'm proposing a major $125 billion breaking every barrier agenda to revitalize and empower communities of color and places where unemployment and poverty remain stubbornly high. From inner cities to poor rural areas, from Appalachia to Indian country. It has to start with a strategy to create more good jobs. Issues including gun control, Israel and Wall Street reforms surfaced during the debate among other topics. Sanders criticized Clinton for her financial ties to Wall Street, besides taking pot shots at her for supporting the Iraqi war. And I'm going to do everything I can to take on the gun lobby and to try to save lives, the lives of the children of women like this and the sisters and the brothers and the daughters and the sons of so many others. But on the ground, voters in New York City are divided. For Secretary Clinton, New York is home. She's got to do well here. The population that she generally does well with in primaries, lots of African Americans, lots of women over 40, are here in large numbers and tend to vote in Democratic primaries. Bernie Sanders picks up steam here, does well. It'll be a problem for Secretary Clinton. Why? She's going to have a lot of explaining to do to Democrats all over the country, and the Republicans will be frankly rejoicing. With 247 pledged delegates at stake, New York City is among the most significant nominating contests before the Democrats' July convention in Philadelphia. So far, Clinton leads Sanders by 251 bound delegates to the July Democratic convention, where 2,383 delegates will be needed for the nomination. 
The New York primary could either help former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton consolidate her status as Democratic frontrunner or hand a significant victory to rival Bernie Sanders. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. North Korea today failed in its fresh attempt to launch what experts believe was an intermediate-range ballistic missile on Friday. The missile launch was in defiance with the UN sanctions which are in place. The launch was scheduled as the country celebrated the Day of the Sun on the birth anniversary of the Supreme Leader Kim Jong-un's grandfather and founding president Kim Il-sung. It comes as an embarrassing setback for Kim Jong-un, who is responsible for raising tension in the Korean Peninsula with several nuclear tests and missile launches during past several months. China, meanwhile, warned against further worsening of tensions in the region if Pyongyang continues with its nuclear mission. Meanwhile, Brazil's Supreme Court uh, rejected a last-ditch attempt by President Dilma Rousseff to halt an impeachment process against her. Seven of the ten justices denied a request for an injunction against the proceedings that Brazil's Attorney General said amounted to denying Rousseff the opportunity to defend herself. The developments come even as Brazil's lower house of the Congress is due to vote on Sunday on sending Rousseff to trial in the Senate. The impeachment debate in the lower house of parliament is due to start later on Friday and continue until Sunday's vote. If two-thirds of the MPs vote for the impeachment, the motion will pass to the Senate. An impeachment vote would pave the way for Rousseff to be removed from office. Uh, she says, of course, that her opponents are plotting a coup and faces claims that she manipulated government accounts. And now let's get you some more international news updates in Global Buzz. U.S. Defense Secretary Ashton Carter will visit American aircraft carrier in South China Sea. This comes as a response to the visit of a top military officers to China to the island to over, oversee buildings, building work. The United States has already conducted patrols around the disputed islands controlled by China to underscore its right to navigate the seas. Spain's acting industry minister resigned on Friday over allegations of alleged links to offshore dealings. Soria, who was named in the Panama Papers, denied his involvement after two Spanish news outlets said that they had documents proving that he headed an offshore firm with his brother. Belgian Transport Minister Jacqueline Galland resigned on Friday over the Brussels airport security issue. The resignation comes after the release of an EU report over the security lapses in the Brussels airport. The Prime Minister accepted her resignation. Britain's Duke and Duchess of Cambridge visited Bhutan on Thursday. Bhutan's fifth king, Jigme Wangchuk, and Queen Jetson Pema received the British royals for the 45-minute private audience. The royal couple will stay there for two days, and their week-long tour ends back in India on Saturday after a visit to the Taj Mahal. Sports news now in India, art class Malaysia in the round-robin match to enter the finals of the Sultan Azlan Shah Cup in Malaysia. India defeated host Malaysia 6-1 to enter the finals for the seventh time. Nikin Timaya opened for the scoring in the fifth minute to give India a 1-0 lead. For Malaysia, Sheril Sabah scored the lone goal for his team in the 48th minute. India will now take on world champions Australia in the finals on Saturday. With the win, India is in the second spot with 12 points after table toppers Australia who we'll finished the league phase with 18 Dalbinda. points Dalbinda with all win Harjit. record. Harjit may get the rebound back. Harjit gets a goal. That's his first senior. And now let's give you more updates in Sports Beat. <music> Olympic medal winning boxer Mary Combe was on Thursday named one of the eight ambassadors for the upcoming World Championships by the World International Boxing Association. Mary Combe has, to her credit, five World Champion gold medals. Other ambassadors are Nicola Adams of Great Britain, Team USA's light flight weight Marlene Esparza, Adriana Aruha from host country of this year's Olympic Games Brazil, Bulgaria's Stanimira Petrova and Morocco's Khadija Mahdi. Indian shuttler K. Srikant and Ajay Jairam jumped up the list in the latest BWF World Ranking release today. Srikant reached the 13th spot while Jairam surged three places to the 21st position. Due to the injury, P. Kashyap skipped the Malaysian Opens and slipped two places to be at the 20th spot, while Saina Neval and PV Sindhu maintained their positions at world number 8 and 10, respectively, in the women's singles ranking. 
Rafael Nadal defeated Stan Morinka 6-1-6-4 to set up a clash with Andy Murray in the semi-finals of the Monte Carlo Masters on Saturday. Second-seeded Murray, on the other hand, thrashed Milos Raonic for the just uh, two games in Friday's first match. Uh, Fifth-seeded Nadal, who broke decisively in the ninth game of the second set, has yet to win a title this year. And that's all we have for you in the news tonight. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.